Hi. About a week ago, we posted the first video in this series on refrigeration. Since that time, I did a little bit of additional cosmetic work. I built a box to house the refrigerator, put it up on some legs, built a double-paned door, added a temperature controller, and some lights. And what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to show you how well it works. Just kidding. This is not a toy. This is a real refrigerator. And so what we're going to do is we're going to refrigerate a real food load. I've got a bottle of wine. I have a dozen eggs, a pie, a couple of packs of hot dogs, six pack of beer, and a six pack of Coke. And what we're going to do is I'm gonna place this temperature probe inside of the Coke, and we're gonna see how long it takes to bring this load down from room temperature down to about 37, 38 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a good temperature for a refrigerator. And what you'll do is you'll watch the temperature of the probe in one of the food items, the Coke, and the clock, and you're gonna see how long this takes to work. As just an aside, I had said that there was a possibility that this may be able to work without any moving parts. It doesn't. When we tried operating this refrigerator without the fans engaged, uh, it really worked very poorly. And so I would recommend that when you use this design and you incorporate fans, you don't need to use the large spacings that we have on our heat sinks in the back. If you go back to the previous video, you'll see how we designed that. You can make this a little more compact, a little cheaper, if you go ahead and compress the uh, fins of the heat sink a little bit more, it'll work just as well, if not better, and save you some money. So now we're just gonna have to be patient. We'll watch the clock, we'll watch the temperature controller, and we'll see just how well this does. So as you can see, it works. I uh, brought the food down to typical refrigerator temperatures in about two and a half hours, which is not that surprising because there's a fair amount of food in there. Uh, one of the big limitations though on any kind of a refrigerator like this is going to be the ability to remove the heat from the hot side of the Peltiers. And so in version 2.0 of this refrigerator, we're going to make some changes in the way that we're going to take the heat away. What that means is that we're going to use 12 of these identical Peltier devices, but we're going to be removing the heat 
with water cooling. The reason that that is intriguing is because we can isolate uh, the fan noise from the refrigerator and bring the heat to another location that will allow us to draw the heat into even another room if we chose to do that. So the radiators that we're using here are going to be remoted from the back of the freezer device. And it also allows us to incorporate a potential energy saving uh, principle here. In New England, it's winter at least six months out of the year. And it is kind of ironic that we're building this device to keep things cold in a room that we are trying to keep warm inside of an environment which is cold. And so we're gonna use a neat technique to hopefully increase the efficiency of the device by taking advantage of this remote cooling system. And we're gonna be showing you that in the upcoming video on the solid state freezer. So I hope you found this interesting. And even if you don't wanna build something quite this large or as complicated, uh, still some of the principles might be useful if you wanna build some sort of a modification of this. So I wanna thank you very much for watching and please subscribe because it really helps out the channel. And I wish you a wonderful evening. Good night.